Good evening. I'm Ruth Charles. I am uh, with the League of Women Voters here in Winona, and this welcome to our primary um, election voter forums for the Minnesota House candidates from District 26A. Um, we would like to thank our co-sponsors, which are the Advocacy Center of Winona, AAUW Winona Branch, Engage Winona, Project Fine, and Winona State University Department of Social Work. We are providing this forum via government access channel on um, channels HBC 19 and chan on Spe Spectrum's channel on government access. The public is invited to be in attendance here in the City Hall, and we have a great audience here tonight. We want to thank the City of Winona for allowing us to hold this educational forum in the Council Chambers and the use of staff and technical assistance for this forum. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan volunteer organization organized at the local, state, and national level to encourage citizens to, be, to participate in government. While we, as a league, do study and take stance on issues, we do not endorse or support political parties, candidates, or tell, voter, tell the voters how to answer referendum questions. When, we, um, when candidates are unable to attend the forum, we will read statements from them. For our home viewing audience, you may call in questions to be considered this evening by calling the number, and you need to include 507-457-457. 8280. That number again is 507 457 8280. A volunteer will write you up your question and bring it to the question facilitator table. This evening, we, are, we welcome the candidates for the Minnesota House District 26A from the Republican Party, S. James Dorr and Aaron Rapinski, and from the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, or DFL, Sarah Kruger and Dwayne Vagley. The Minnesota District 26A covers the eastern part of the western of Winona County, but not all of the county. Please review your sample ballot before going to the polls. One of the things I am going to do is to show the sample ballots, and I'm going to also show it to the audience here. When a voter receives their ballot for the partisan prime, the state partisan primary, the voter has to choose one column in which to vote. One column will be the Republican Party candidates for the Minnesota House District 26A. And in this column, it'll conclude, include S. James Dorr and Aaron Rapinski, who are here tonight. The other column will be for the Democratic Farmer Labor or DFL voters. This column will have the candidates for the Minnesota House 20, District 26A, including Sarah Kruger and Dwayne Vagley, who are also here tonight. During the primary, the voter can only vote in one column. During the general election in November, you can vote for any party or any candidate, but this is a state partisan primary and the voter can only vote for the candidates for one electoral party. As you hear the discussion tonight, be aware of the party of the candidate you are hearing and which column, either the Republican or the Democratic Farmer Labor or DFL uh, that the candidate represents. We have sample ballots here at the forum, and at, if those of you at home can check your sample ballots at either the League of Women Voters Voter Guide Service, which is vote411.org, or the Minnesota Secretary of State, which is mnvotes.gov, and that's mnvotes.gov. Tonight's forum is intended to provide the voters with information so they can make an educated choice on the ballot. The views expressed in this educational forum are those of the candidates. The League of Women Voters Winona has a participation part, policy and ground rules that were provided to the candidates. Um, I, mean, I was just told, can you please ask in the very back row to move forward so people can stand along the back wall? So if possible, if the chairs can come forward, that would be great. All right. <coughs> The League of Women Voters participation policy and ground rules were provided to the candidates with their invitation to attend. This is, as you know, a live cable TV broadcast. The public was invited to submit questions for the candidates through the League of Women Voters uh, Winona email site on Facebook page. And question facilitators from the League of Women Voters and its co-sponsors views the questions and the League of Women Voters moderator has the final selection of the, of the questions to the candidates. This forum is being taped 
may not be edited and may, must not broad, be broadcast in its entirety in accord with all the FCC regulations. The League of Women Voters will determine the questions to be asked and attempts in good faith will be made to cover all areas of interest expressed in advance of the forum by the public. The candidates will not know the questions in advance. Questions that are hostile, partisan, embarrassing, inappropriate, or of a personal in nature will not be asked. Questions on similar topics may be grouped. And all questions will become the property of the League of Women Voters. Now, our timekeeper for this evening is Wendy Draves. The candidates will strictly observe the time limits on responses. The timekeeper will hold up cards to indicate that the time is about to expire. Once the stop card is displayed, the candidate will stop at the end of the current sentence. The opening statement is two minutes, questions are one minute, and the closing statement is one minute. The candidates with us today are, and what I'd like to do is as we do this, we could do a mic check to make sure, and the little slip uh, button is at the bottom there. So our first uh, candidate is Republican S. James Dorr. And can you just say hello into the mic and make sure we can hear you fine? Hello, S. James Dorr. Thank you. Make sure you stay close to that. Um, and our second Republican candidate is Aaron Rapinski. Good evening, Aaron Rapinski. Pull it a little closer to you, okay? Good evening, Aaron Rapinski. Thank you. Our two Republicans for the DFL are Sarah Kruger. Democrat. Democrat, sorry, what did I say? Our Democrat Farmer Labor DFL candidates are candidates tonight are Sarah Kruger. Hello, everyone. And Dwayne Bagley. Hello, everyone. Dwayne Bagley. Thank you. We will have a rotation of who answers the questions, and I will address the candidates each time with their full name and their party. All right, and we would like to start our rotation um, with who answers the questions, and I will. Um, and I would like to begin with our opening statements, and our first speaker will be. Um, S. James Dorr from the Republican Party. You have two minutes. Good evening. I'd like to say thank you to the League for hosting this uh, forum so you have an opportunity to uh, see the candidates in a, in a fair, equal light. Uh, they didn't charge money to get in here, so again, thank you for hosting. Uh, I'm very strongly the freedom candidate. You probably remember hearing my name, seeing it on the ballot two years ago, where I sat in the same room approximately two years ago opposing the extreme left that fought uh, for 36 years to try and take more money from the working class and then went on in those last two years to make 38 years fighting to make abortion uh, legal up to the day of birth, which uh, they've actually even are advertising that our state tax dollar uh, will pay for such, for even for uh, tourism purposes from other states, uh, just a sick individual. And then also I was highly motivated by a good friend of mine who very sadly died uh, at the hands, in part, by the state uh, uh, executive orders, which, again, my opponent was a decision vote. So it was extremely important uh, that I fight that in the name of God, family, and country. I stand to fight for our education, economy, public safety, our disabled and elderly, along with their caregivers. Uh, again, freedom, uh, the best way to find the majority of my information, because it's hard to say in two minutes, can be found at doorforfreedom.com. Uh, the website. Otherwise, I can be uh, uh, held accountable for not being bought off, which I'm afraid some opponents are bought off. And then also our very uh, our very news. I I want to say thank you to the Winona Post, Chris, because uh, the Winona City Council uh, is failed to even accurately identify when they have votes. They tried to take away the freedom of all renters and landlords' rights to their properties with a. Uh, disorderly use ordinance, and then failed to legally identify in their notes that they actually voted on it. Uh, again, thankfully, they uh, had one vote too short, and the lawyer told them so, and they later found it was an illegal act. But you will not have that coming from Stephen Doerr. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Aaron Rapinski, Republican. Hello. Thank you for inviting me here today, and thank you to all you folks that are submitting questions this evening. I'm Aaron Rapinski. I love being a Minnesotan and even more so a Winonan. And I'm running for the House of Representatives because we need change and balance in St. Paul. I'm not a career politician, but more a concerned member of this community that really feels a political calling. 
I'm concerned about the direction Minnesota is headed, and I felt compelled to do something about it. I've always been someone that leads by example, and we need to elect people that demonstrate community, and I believe my community involvement has proven that. My wife Michelle and I own two small businesses that we started from scratch, so I understand the need for having a fiscally responsible budget. We need to work together and consider all points of view. I've demonstrated the ability to listen to the public, speak for the majority, and work with others to get things done. I regularly hear concerns, I ask questions, and I advocate for needed solutions. I will work to bring the change we need and desperately the balance that we need to Minnesota. When I was growing up in Minnesota, it was really a strong leading state in education, public safety, and a leader in the economy. Now we struggle in all three of those areas. We need to bring back the basics of education. We need to support our senior citizens, our veterans, and all of our emergency services. We need to make Minnesota more welcoming for businesses. We, know we need to hold our policymakers accountable for wasteful spending. Minnesota spent a $19 billion surplus, added 10 billion more in taxes, and increased the budget by 38% in two years. Out of necessity, I come from a mentality and a background of not spending more than you have. Our current legislators seem to spend too freely at our taxpayers' expense. I hope to bring unity and a fiscal common sense in order to make that change. I'm asking for your support in August and again in November. I'm Aaron Rupinski. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Sarah Kruger from the DFL. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this event. Events like these are really important because they help people make a truly informed decision when they vote. I think it's also important to note that the League of Women Voters was started in 1920 by leaders of the women's suffrage movement. Its mission is to protect and expand voting rights and ensure everyone is represented in our democracy. Such actions opened doors for pioneers like the only woman to have represented the Winona area in the Minnesota House, Virginia Torgerson. She too worked to improve conditions for women in the community and across the state. Representative Torgerson served our community from 1963 to 1965. It's nearly 60 years ago. As I run for this office, I hope to help create a new reality in which everyone feels welcome to help make the decisions that improve people's lives. You'll notice I'm the only woman up here. My candidacy represents a positive change for a bright future, which is what I hear from people that they are yearning for. I was raised in Winona. My family has deep roots here in Southern Minnesota. So I will listen to you here in order to be a strong voice for you at the Capitol. My top priority is to represent and serve our district's needs above all else. And because of my experience as chief of staff uh, for a pro-democracy nonprofit, I have state level experience. I know my way around the legislative process. I know how to collaborate with public agencies. I know how to put people above party to work with both Democrats and Republicans to find common ground and get things done. Thank you. Thank you. And last, we have Dwayne Vagley from the DFL to give us his opening statement. Hello. Um, first, thank you to the League of Women Voters for organizing this event. The work that you do for uh, in our community is very important. I also want to thank everyone who came tonight and everybody who's watching from home. This is exactly what democracy looks like. Um, who am I? I'm a dad, I'm a teacher, a county board commissioner, and an active leader and volunteer. My wife, Danina, and I have raised her two children in Winona. Tristan and Danica both graduated from Winona Senior High School. I've worked and lived in Winona County full-time for the last 30 years. Working and living full-time in our community is incredibly important when it comes to understanding the needs of the people in District 26A. I've dedicated my life to supporting Winona County, representing our community on multiple boards, organizing events, volunteering for local nonprofits, supporting refugees and those experiencing homelessness.
I've been a social studies teacher at Winona Senior High School for 28 years, teaching civics, environmental studies, and history. Every day I work with kids and families that come from a wide range of backgrounds. I've worked with over 9,000 students and families. I'm a former Winona Teacher of the Year and a top 10 finalist for the Minnesota State Teacher of the Year Award. In addition to, being a, uh, to teaching full time, I've been a county board commissioner for 10 years, and this year I'm the board chair. This has given me an important local understanding of issues related to human services, public health, law enforcement, roads and bridges, environmental planning, and other areas. The knowledge, skills, and abilities you get representing your community as a local government official are essential for state work. I'm running because I'm both very worried and very excited about the world that we're leaving our kids and grandkids. I believe leadership is about service to others. I don't just talk the talk at school, I walk the walk in the community. I volunteer with a wide range of community groups. Public office should be about service and not ambition. Thank you for holding this forum today and I look forward to a lively discussion. Thank you. And thank you candidates for your opening statements. We're now ready for our first audience question. And remember, you have one minute to answer this. And we will be starting in a rotation. And Dwayne Bagley from the DFL will be starting with you. Um, what do you feel? And if you would like the question repeated at any point in time, please ask so. And our first question is, what do you feel are the top issues in this election for this office and why? It's a fantastic question. I and my campaign team have spent a lot of time door knocking. Here are what I think are the top issues. Uh, money is tight for people. They're worried about their kids. They're worried about retirement. Um, they're worried about the water that they drink. And they're also very concerned about the political climate right now. People want to tone down the language. They want people in St. Paul and Washington, D.C. who are respectful, who are civil, and who can work to get things done. They want politicians to be solution focused and not just grandstanding and appearing on social media and sound bites. Um, all of those issues are solvable. Government private business and community organizations can work on all of those issues. Money is tight because we, uh, we don't have strong unions like we did in, in between the 1950s and 1970s. People are concerned about Social Security for very good reasons. People are concerned about their kids, um, mental health, and other reasons. And all these problems are fixable. By working together, we can solve any problem that confronts Minnesota or the world today. Thank you. Next will be from Sarah Kruger from the DFL. I think there's a few top central issues that we can focus on in one minute. Uh, one is our local economy, right? Making sure that we have uh, affordable living for everyone, everything from housing um, to being able to uh, be able to afford uh, buying prescription medication. Second issue that I hear frequently is making sure that our public education system is being fully funded, whether that's through pre-K through higher ed. Um, and expanding programs such as the North Star Promise so that more students have access to fully funded uh, programs through our min state institutions. Third is clean water. We need to obviously address the issues that we're facing here in the Karst region through a statewide comprehensive plan, but also have water protection quality in place at a state level for bodies of water such as Lake Superior. We do not have that in place currently. And then democracy. Every single day at the doors I hear from both the left, the right, the center, independents, people are worried about the future of our country. And one thing that I find is a commonality is everybody wants to be able to live in a healthy, safe, and happy community. Thank you. Next, we will hear from S. James Dorr, Republican. Oh, thank you. Uh, the biggest thing is freedom. Like I said earlier, I learned that two years ago in talking to the uh, the, uh, the public is what they needed is freedom. They wanted their children to go to school free of all the uh, social experimenting that's going on. They wanted the dollars and cents that are spent uh, focused on literacy and STEM projects as opposed to social experiments, the DEI, the CRT need to go. Uh, the economy, I, I'm, something bothering me right now, I gotta share real quick. I kept hearing the word pro-democracy activi activism and democracy earlier. We are a constitutional republic, and that is extremely different. We have a constitution. That's one place that we need to start from is make sure that we are respecting, you know, the Bill of Rights. And that's actually brings me back to the people's demands is we need to stop the left from uh, uh, attacking the Second Amendment right, uh, freedom of religion. Again, the cause that brought me here when my friend was killed, uh, freedom of uh, uh, medical freedom. Thank you. Aaron Rapinski, Republican. 
My top three priorities are economy, education, and public safety. Um, the Minnesota economy is not what it needs to be. We squandered a $19 billion surplus. We increased taxes. We raised the government budget by 38%. That is not fiscal responsibility. So I think Minnesota needs to look at both sides. They need to start making things a little bit more streamlined as far as businesses. We need to look at some of the mandates and reevaluate some of those mandates that they put in. I think we can eliminate social security tax also. Um, another big one, of course, is education. Minnesota suffers in the basics, math, reading, science. I think uh, average completion rate or the people that are attending high school on an average is like 69%. It's, it's incredibly bad. We need to look at our education processes and improve those. And public safety, we need to support our public safety. There is a shortfall for officers in the Minnesota area, all over the entire, all, all 87 counties. So public safety, education, and economy. Thank you. Our next question is number two, and Aaron Rapinski, Republican, you will be starting this question. What skills do you bring to the table to be able to evaluate budgets and make recommendations? What personal skills do you possess that help you to negotiate and communicate on specific issues of contention or disagreement? Thank you for your question. Um, my wife and I, Michelle and I, own two small businesses that we started from scratch. And it is very important if anyone owns a small business, they understand being fiscally responsible and making the tough choices to keep that business alive. We've had those businesses, one of them for over 25 years, and the other for over 10 years. So I bring a, a history of being fiscally responsible. And I've shown and displayed that I'm in Winona City Council tenure. I've um, spent the last four years looking at levies, looking at things to increase Winona's availability for funds and, and really looking at wants versus needs. A person needs to look at those needs and decide what's really a need and what's a want. And I think my ability that I've taken to the city council and I'm gonna to expand to the state is gonna be very advantageous for this position. Thank you. Next, we will hear from, um, let's see, two is S. James Dora, Republican. Repeat the question, please. Yes. What skills do you bring to the table to be able to evaluate budgets and make recommendations? What personal skills do you possess that help you to negotiate and communicate on specific issues of contention or disagreement? I've had my share of uh, communication challenges, obviously, with those with uh, opposing views of mine and uh, an ability to maintain a respectful environment uh, following you know, professional training at uh, went on State University in accounting and computer science, same area as university where I earned my bachelor's degree in criminal justice and statistics, and uh, also my master's of arts in secondary education, and then also my administration degree from the University of Houston, Victoria, as well as graduate coursework in uh, math and science in UTSA and the University Incarnate Word. Uh, I also had the privilege of starting uh, businesses while I was uh, going to college at St. Mary's University, right across from the old Hardee's. I ran a tax preparation, I'm sorry, yeah, tax preparation and small uh, small business bookkeeping where I assisted a uncle out there with Ken's equipment repair when he was buying a Bobcat about 30 some years ago, uh, you know, to present the paperwork to their uh, bank. Uh, obviously running a family of, you know, uh, family. Thank of, you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Dwayne Vagley, DFL. Um, I have served on the Winona County Board for 10 years. When you serve on the County Board, you need to make some very difficult decisions. The same goes for City Council, the same goes for Soil and Water Conservation Districts. Um, in the past, I've both advocated for increases in some programs. I've also advocated for cuts in others. I've had to sit in the hot seat and listen to people both speak in favor of certain programs and also um, in truth and taxation meetings when there are residents who are very concerned and have very understandable questions about their taxes. 
Um, the county budget is approximately, I believe, $62 million. The, the state budget is much larger. It's the same process. You listen to a wide range of views. It is impossible for any one person to understand everything there is that goes into a um, local and state government. I am um, one of the things that I love to do, and I, re I reach out to people from different perspectives, ask um, their perspectives, and listen and make the best possible decisions. Serving in public office um, is not not always easy. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Sarah Kruger, DFL. Through my state level uh, experience, uh, one of the things that I do is I manage a fairly large budget for a nonprofit organization. I also help to craft bills uh, in the legislature that contain fiscal notes, so having an understanding around that. Um, one of the things that we do at Fair Vote Minnesota, where I work, is that we help create an open dialogue. We are a nonpartisan organization creating open dialogues around democracy. We live in a democratic republic um, that allows individuals from both parties, independents, um, and all who are welcome to have conversations around our democracy and the direction that it's headed, and to discuss uh, democratic reforms that we might push through the Minnesota legislature that would help create um, a stronger democracy in which everyone can participate. Uh, I, I travel across the state for, for my work, and one of the things that I have done is to actually help host candidate forums, um, some of which have been very peaceful, some of which can get a little bit more contentious between candidates, uh, but always making sure that we can Thank peacefully you. discuss differences. Thank you. And we will start, continue on question three, uh, Sarah Kruger, DFL, with you. And the next question is, what ideas do you have to encourage affordable housing in Winona County? So we had uh, $1 billion uh, go towards one-time funding um, for housing in the legislature this past biennium. And some of the things that that funding has done uh, is to prevent homelessness, Prevention is always the best the best route to go, and so having um, having a budget surplus that goes towards those kind of things helps save taxpayer dollars down the road. Um, it has also gone towards um, a recapitalization of distressed buildings to make sure, especially in our communities uh, in in Greater Minnesota and other areas, um, that we can um, be maintaining maintaining buildings in our communities. Um, we need to be ensuring that first-time homeowners uh, are able to access the American dream and afford to buy a home. I also uh, feel very strongly that we need to make sure that we have accessible and affordi affordable housing um, for seniors in our community to be able to access. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Dwayne Vagley, DFL. Um, housing is one of the issues I've heard a lot knocking on doors uh, from everybody, from senior citizens, um, from first time, especially first time home buyers who are anxious to move into their first home, but it's, it's simply in too expensive. Um, I, a number of years ago, I served on the steering committee of the warming center, the overnight homeless shelter in Winona. I have a wide range of experience working with people who are facing housing um, insecurity. I've worked with refugees. I've literally helped raise money to, to purchase two homes in Winona County. Um, in terms of housing, one of the things that Winona County did is it partnered with four other cities and conducted a, a housing, um, a housing uh, study. We have a need for I believe it's 720 units in the next decade or so in the city of Winona. How do you make those changes? You listen to and work with local developers. You, um, you, talk, you look at your zoning laws and see what can be changed to provide more housing options for that missing middle. Um, it's, it, so you need housing options all across the spectrum. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Aaron Rapinski, Republican. Affordable housing is a, is a big issue in our area. Um, Sometimes government gets involved in things and they start making mandates and stuff and it makes the process last a lot longer. And that's one thing that Minnesota has done. We need to make housing affordable for our citizens here. And, and everybody's seen the need. Everyone has seen the need. I'm, I'm born and raised from Winona. I've lived in this area my entire life and I've grown up in this area. I've worked in this area and I've seen that need increase year after year after year. So I think we need to look at ways that we can make programs more affordable 
and we can make programs more accessible for not only our senior citizens, we're talking about people that have some sort of physical or mental need also that need affordable housing in our area. We need to look at increasing the amount of home units. I believe it was 700 some units in the next five to 10 years. That's an awful lot of housing units that's gonna be needed right in the Winona area. And if we wanna increase our business space and increase employees to our area, we need to make it more affordable Thank and you. more enjoyable. Thank you. And finally, S. James Dorr, Republican. Thank you. Uh, how, how, uh, sorry, housing definitely, as uh, the study says, it's 700 and some units that are needed in Winona County within the next five to 10 years. Uh, one thing I think they could, we can do is uh, streamline permitting, uh, trying to remove excessive red tape. At the same time, of course, maintain a uh, health and safety uh, demand, if you will. I personally have a fa you know a large family. I have nine children, eight of them in the house right now. I went through a proper stage of starting with a fixer upper that was a one bedroom, and then literally moved, and now I have a three bedroom. But the last house we had was a two bedroom, so literally mo moving through a, a process like that. But at, at the same time, I've experienced something that nobody should have. Two years ago, while I was campaigning for this very office, uh, I rented a house through a realtor with an option to purchase the same house. And unfortunately, a lead-based paint hazard by the Minnesota Department of Health was on that house from a child being poisoned. And our city, our county, and even our state do not have safeguards in place. Thank you. That'll be fixed. Thank you. Our next question, number four, we will start with you, S. James Dorr, Republican. There is a public sector sh workforce shortage of teachers, police, nurses, home care assistants, and others. How would you address this shortage? I guess I would begin with making sure that our uh, disabled and our elderly and their care providers are uh, treated with dignity. Two years ago when I campaigned for this office, I was disgusted by the process in which the disabled are literally paraded through having to beg for their uh, caregivers pay, while at the same time, my opponent bragged that he didn't give himself a raise because they assigned a committee to go ahead and take care of compensation for legislators. The same kind of right that they gave themselves, they should give to our disabled and elderly and have that set up where they can afford to be uh, a living wage for those that are providing for our disabled and our elderly. And my niece actually is 30 years old. She turned 30 years old today, and she's bound to a wheelchair. And my wife and I have helped care for her. And uh, I've seen where the challenges are, where Winona Community Options had to close some of their facilities that otherwise provided care for my niece uh, because of the writing that the state legislature made in who can be compensated and for how much. So that needs to be repaired. Thank you. Um, next will be Aaron Rapinski, Republican. Would you repeat the question, please? Certainly. There is a public sector workforce shortage of teachers, police, nurses, home care assistants, and others. How would you address the shortage? A lot of it begins with respect. You know, it'd be nice to see people respect our public service officials a little, uh, little more. Um, I can speak very knowledgeably about some of the health care. I had the opportunity to uh, go through and get my CNA license. And I went through nursing school and, and I did clinicals. And I saw firsthand those individuals that need that assistance and the individuals that help those folks. And there is a need for that. That is not compensated near as well as it should be. And people need to look at those individuals because we're all going to get there eventually and everybody has some sort of family member that's in it right now or will be shortly we need to address those issues we can look at things that like cutting tax on social security that is one way that minnesota needs to do or one of the last states that has that yet we can cut that and that can give those individuals that are on fixed income a little bit more money maybe it might be the difference between getting food or getting medication so that's that's the largest way that we Thank need you. to do it Next, we'll hear from Dwayne Vagley, DFL. Um, that's a fantastic question. It's a very important question. Um, the private sector faces workforce shortages. The public sex sector faces um, work sh uh, workforce shortages. Um, short answer would be better pay, better benefits. Um, that's, the, that's the case in the private sector. It's the case in the public sector as well. And we need to respect um, people in those positions. Liberals like to beat up on cops. Conservatives like to beat up on public school teachers. We need to stop that both ways. Um, in Minnesota, we don't have 
have a nursing home shortage. We don't have a mental health facility um, bed shortage. We don't have rural hospital bed shortages. We have staffing shortages. We don't have enough people to staff those positions. I'm endorsed by the Minnesota Nurses Association, and that's a message that came across loud and clear, is the need for more funding, um, better pay, and more support for those positions. Thank you. And last, Sarah Kruger, DFL. Pay increases, as uh, Dwayne Vagley had mentioned, are, are critical, and especially when we're, we're uh, talking about our educators. Um, something that, that I think is really crucial to point out uh, that I hear across the board uh, for our public sector workers, uh, as well as from people in our community, regardless of their political affiliation, is a support for more protection around pensions. Um, and so I'm proud to be endorsed by Representative Kali Her, who leads the Bipartisan Pension Commission. And something that they have done um, and started with is they are now, for the first time ever, we meeting weekly. And what we have allocated to make sure that the protections are in place around the pensions and to address uh, issues and concerns are 400, is $400 million. And so I think that we need to recognize where we have secured this funding at the DFL and that it is helping and benefiting people in our communities uh, across the state. Thank you. And we'll, our next question, number five, is on water quality. And uh, we will start with Sarah Kruger from the DFL. Given the current situation in Winona County area with a crisis in water quality, how will you as an elected official use your voice and position to clean up and protect Southeast Minnesota's water resources and help homeowner, homeowners who have contaminated drinking water? I think there's a couple different angles that we need to approach this at. The first one that I'm gonna address is the capital investment bill. So in order to pass a capital investment bill, you need 81 votes. We have 70 votes in the Minnesota DFL currently. 70 seats. So that means we need to get 11 Republicans on board uh, in order to pass a capital investment bill. Many of the, uh, the bills that, that Republicans advocated for in the bill that didn't get passed were wastewater management bills. And so, again, going back to a bipartisan approach, how can we get to a place in the legislature where we're passing a capital investment bill um, that has uh, protection for water. Second would be addressing a statewide water quality protection program, which we currently do not have in place. Outside of the Carpest region, I mentioned Lake Superior earlier because I think it's really critical with where our, we are going as a planet in terms of climate change and global warning, warming. We have the largest uh, clean freshwater lake in the world, right? We need a program that, that um, uh, is- Thank you. Yep. Stop there. <laughs> All right, next will be Dwayne Vagley, DFL. Uh, water's a, a big topic. Um, a couple days ago, I was in Homer Township, and I asked uh, the, uh, the members, the neighbors there, what would you do if you could introduce a bill um, the first day of session and that you would see it um, see it happen. There was a fantastic answer given, and I, wanna, I, want, to, I want to celebrate or uh, highlight what Carolyn Van Shake said. She said she would, uh, pass a, she would ask for a bill that would require every rural landowner to have their wells tested and to have it paid for through public taxpayer dollars, to have it um, run through a reputable and um, trusted uh, source so that people would know what's in their water. Water should not be a partisan issue. Water should be an issue. Farmers want clean water, rural residents want clean water. We also need to be careful about the large multinational corporations that want to that want to bottle our water and sell it to other parts of the world. Um, we need to work with farmers. We need to work with rural landowners. A few days ago, I was endorsed by one of the champions of water quality in the Minnesota State Legislature, Rick Hansen. I look forward Thank to you. those conversations. Thank you. Next, we will hear from S. James Dorr, Republican. Thank you. I definitely agree with uh, Dwayne that uh, water should not be a partisan issue. Uh, I also know from farming myself that farmers do not want to waste their expensive fertilizer. So sometimes the quick scapegoat is blame the big farmer. The farmers have no interest in wasting their uh, resources on fertilizer and obviously they want it to go where it is intended to go and they do a lot of uh, uh, care in doing that and you know, row crops, uh, uh, to help prevent erosion and to keep the 
applied materials where they're designed to be. Uh, I do agree in the uh, making it possible for the well testing uh, to know what is in the water, but then obviously have a truth and honest discussion. Sometimes we go off on, on uh, extremism of uh, climate change and other such uh, activism that we don't have time nor should put our money into that kind of uh, nonsense. Thank you. And last on question five, Aaron Rapinski, Republican. Will you please repeat that question? Certainly. This is on water quality. Given the current situation in Winona County area with a crisis in water quality, how will you as an elected official use your voice and position to clean up and protect Southeast Minnesota's water resources and help homeowners who have contaminated drinking water? I'm a huge advocate for clean water. Everybody deserves clean water and clean air. Um, when you look at that, it's really unique to a lot of different areas. Um, I had the opportunity, I lived in the Lewiston area and we had a well and we had a septic system. So we didn't pay for water and we didn't pay for our sewer. Um, there needs to be some funding involved to help have wells tested and that should be done. And it should be done on a continual basis, I believe. And there needs to be maybe a little more regulation when you look at some of the farmers that have these big fields with runoff and stuff. But I do believe with the current regulation we have in place, they do a pretty good job of that. It's my understanding that a lot of the areas in are outside of the city of Winona that have um, wells, a lot of those wells are okay and they've tested okay, but they do need to continue to be tested. Um, I, I think we, if we look at it with the opportunity to work with some of those decision makers and some of those mandates with the farmers and with the different organizations that affect the water. That's the best way to do it, to really speak to the other side. Thank you. All right, and we will continue with you, Aaron Rapinski, Republican, with our question six. With residents and government officials in Winona and Winona County worried about inflation and high taxes, what can you do in St. Paul to provide some relief? Well, to begin with, there needs to be conversations on both sides and the frivolous spending that St. Paul has done, you know, squandering a $19 billion surplus, increasing the budget 38% and another $10 billion. That is not economics. That, that's not the way it should be working. They're just increasing taxes. They're adding more mandates to try and fund that stuff. Both sides need to come together and quit using that as a bargaining chip and it shouldn't be weaponized when it comes to political stuff like this. There has to be conversations done. Um, when, when you look at the economy, people, everybody knows the bottom line. People are paying more at the grocery stores, they're paying more at the gas pumps. That hurts. A lot of people with fixed in incomes can't absorb the price of inflation. They just can't. So we need to look at that. And both sides need to come together and quit using it as a bargaining chip. Thank you. S. James Dorr, Republican. I can repeat the question, please. Certainly. With residents and government officials in Winona and Winona County worried about inflation and high taxes, what can you do in St. Paul to provide some relief? The, the first one would be to go ahead and uh, stop the uh, income taxing on Social Security benefits our elderly have worked so hard and paid in their whole life of working and uh, their, their social security checks are not, in most cases, adequate to even cover their bills. And so the idea that we take income taxes from them is, is an absurd out of their social security. Uh, I, I strongly oppose my opponent's idea of more regulation on our farmers that have crops. I think that's the wrong route. Uh, education and working with our partners and not uh, trying to put in more regulation. And I must oppose his uh, suggestion. Uh, I strongly believe that we need a work over of our budget and erode, you know, remove, remove all the waste, any of the CRT and uh, DEI type of fundings, uh, work through the education that 11 committee members that are created the new laws to be a teacher in the state. That needs to be work over. Uh, I'd be in a uh, 17 plus year certified classroom teacher uh, experience. Thank you. Uh, and wanted to help with that. Uh, All right, thank prepare. you. Next, we'll hear from Sarah Kruger, DFL. One thing we can do that is very specific and goes back to your earlier question on water quality. And uh, this was a bill introduced by Steve Jacobs that was a $5 per acre tax credit 
on land, farmable land that would go toward uh, the Minnesota Agricultural Water Quality Certification Program. So I think that would help our farmers, help our water quality issue with the nitrates. Second thing, when we talk about the, um, the surplus that was spent, that helps us greatly in terms of local government aid. So it helps us both in the city of Winona as well as the county. Um, at, and so what, what we have seen is we would have had property tax increases that were in the double digits if that surplus had not been spent um, by the state because we fill the holes in our local budget with the aid that comes from the state. So we ended up um, having an increase of 9% for property taxes. It would have been 15. Um, lastly, regarding Social Security tax, I also agree we should not be taxing Social Security. However, we need to recognize that that creates a 2 to $4 billion hole in the budget, and how are we going to tighten our belts in other areas? Thank you. And Dwayne Vagley, DFL. First of all, we need to be careful about what is real inflation, which is an incredibly important issue, um, and what's the result of uh, greedflation or price gouging, what's taking place in our economy right now. Over the last 45 years, the playing field has been tilted in favor of the billionaires, the big banks, the too big to fail uh, corporations. We need to uh, advocate for working families. It is possible to lower taxes on working families and increase taxes on the super rich and billionaires. Our tax policy has been tilted there's a reason why the rich have gotten insanely rich in the last 45 years and most working class people's incomes are either either stagnant or dropping. Um, there are ways to increase taxes and decrease some taxes. One, one uh, tax decrease that I would support is I've heard from local farmers about the need to reclassify the buffer zones from the setbacks from streams. That, that, should, be, that should be classified in a different way so it's not taxed um, as normal uh, ag land. Another thing we need to do is shift the burden from local property tax, which is the most regressive Thank to the you. state level. Thank you. We are now at question seven, and we will start with Dwayne Vagley, DFL. Question seven is, what is your position on reproductive rights? What actions have you taken or participated in? That's an incredibly important question. It's one of the most important questions facing people in Minnesota, the U.S., and the world. Um, it is a basic human right to have the ability to control your body. Basic reproductive health decisions should remain with the woman and only with the woman. Um, I have a daughter and I have had 9,000 students. I'm very concerned about the world that they're growing up in. What just happened in Iowa is scary. What's happened in every state around us is scary. If you're interested in freedom, allow women to have the freedom to make choices about their body. Um, literally four hours ago, three, four hours ago, I was sitting in the home of Afghan refugees who fled a land full of religious fundamentalism mentalist and it's been beautiful to see how those uh, those children especially the young girls are flourishing in America we need to keep the North Star state a beacon of hope um, and a sanctuary from all the other things that are happening in, in our region and country thank I'm, you I'm sorry and I'm a, a very pro-choice I'm the only candidate who's been endorsed by pro-choice Minnesota thank you thank you next we'll hear from Sarah Kruger DFL I firmly believe that reproductive health care is an issue that between an individual and their health care provider. So we live in a state that we are now fully surrounded by states that have restricted access to reproductive health care, a full ban in North and South Dakota. Um, Nebraska and Wisconsin have uh, severely limited access to reproductive health care. There is a six-week ban in Iowa that just went into place. And even a state very similar to ours politically in Illinois, um, you can only access uh, an abortion up until, quote, viability, which is a subjective um, determination made on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so one of the things that we need to be doing is in electing uh, a, a representative to this seat who has always been a very strong advocate for choice, who has not waffled or wavered on this issue or put uh, qualifiers onto it. I am endorsed by Planned Parenthood, I am endorsed by Women Winning, and I am endorsed by Emily's List. Um, I think that we need to be vigilant in protecting the PRO Act uh, in the direction that our neighboring states are going. Thank you. Next we will hear from Aaron Rapinski, Republican. When you hear the term um, reproductive rights, that, that's really abortion. That's really what that means. And that often gets really weaponized. I don't think you're ever going to see Minnesota ban abortion. Um, I do believe that is a, a discussion that happens between a patient and a doctor. I am pro-life. 
and I fundamentally am against the ability that the Minnesota law currently states that you can have an abortion right up until birth, right up until birth. I think most Minnesotans feel the same way I do about that. I think that's wrong, and I don't agree with that. I don't know right what the right um, amount of time is, but there needs to be a discussion on both sides of the aisle, and there needs to be compromise on that. But I am pro-life, and I believe that it is truly uh, probably one of the most difficult situations that a person's ever had to go on through. And I think it's if it happens between the patient. Thank you. We'll stop there. Sorry. And last, S. James Dorr, Republican. Thank you. Uh, as Mr. Rapinski shared there, uh, reproductive rights is a cover for a kill, an abortion industry. They brag that they don't charge for their specimens that they ship out, but they only charge shipping and handling. And that is literally being promoted across our country. And apparently it must be such a lucrative business that they're even now taking our taxpayers' dollars and encouraging an abortion tourism a destination, Minnesota. Uh, I think that's sick and it's got to stop. And it's only way going to stop is if you vote for a pro-life candidate. And uh, the MCCL voters guide has been published already for this primary. And my opponent and I stand most mostly aligned, but I do see that he reserves uh, the uh, for science uh, a window there, which I would disagree with. Uh, again, I am pro-life. Uh, I've lived the experience with my own my firstborn daughter, where the uh, a group of women in Win in Winona that are Okay. Funded by government, tried to stop her life. Thank you. She's 30 years old today. I want to make sure that we try and fit in one last question real quickly. And this one's on energy. What energy sources do you support? Energy as far as nuclear, wind, or hydropower, or others. What energy sources do you support and why? And we will be starting with S. James Dorr, Republican. I would support all use, uh, all sources of energy. Uh, we've seen a devastating uh, uh, situation in Texas where they do have uh, wind and solar and uh, natural gas and nuclear, and they did not have enough power, and literally people froze to death, and that was in Texas. We're up in the northern part of the country, and we need the reliability that and, and in, inexpensive access to natural gas, uh, nuclear, Coal should not be closed down across the, world, the ocean from us. Our competitors in our economic war that we're in are building coal plants while they're going and encouraging us to shut, shut them down. They just built the large transmission lines literally from the coal mines through Minnesota, Wisconsin, over to uh, uh, Indiana. So the idea that we would want to shut that down or not have that kind of energy that's reliable uh, when, when the snow is covering our our uh, solar boards and the wind's not blowing, we need all sources on the table. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Aaron Rapinski, Republican. Will you repeat that question one more time, please? Certainly. It's about energy. What energy sources, such as nuclear, wind, hydropower, or others, do you support and why? Well, I, too, support all types of energy. Um, we need to look at alternatives. We need both sides of the aisle to come together and look at ways that we can increase our energy grid. Um, a lot of people talk about EV vehicles. That's probably not going to happen in Minnesota. It's too cold. And we don't have as much sun as we do, but we can look at some solar things. We can look at alternative types of energy. Wind is a good one. Hydroelectric energy. It sure would be nice if we could access use on our Mississippi River to help make some more hydroelectric energy. The river is always flowing. Maybe that's something we want to look at. So I think government needs to come together on both sides, stop weaponizing it and using it as a bargain chip, and start having true conversations of what we can do here in Minnesota to make energy not only more affordable, to make energy more clean. So our youth will grow up in a clean environment. Thank you. And next we'll hear from Dwayne Vagley, DFL. Um, before, before we start talking about what energy sources that we support, we should first talk about energy conservation. Before we talk about how we produce more, we need to be much more careful about conserving the energy that we have in terms of our building codes, um, how we build uh, both public and private homes. There's going to be a need for a transition period um, in terms of base load. We will need nuclear, we will need coal in the short term. If you care about your kids, if you care about your grandkids, if you care about your great grandkids, and especially 
especially if you care about other people's great grandkids, you need to recognize that we need to make a transition towards renewable energy. I strongly support what the state legislature has done over the last two sessions towards moving towards a 100% renewable, carbon-free um, economy um, in the next in the next couple decades. Um, uh, what's happening, and, to, and it, all, it also relates to air pollution and water pollution. Um, it's there's, there's going to be a transition period. There will be a need uh, for nuclear and coal, and, but we need to be moving towards a renewable future. Thank you. And last, Sarah Kruger, DFL. We don't have a planet B. We are currently in a transition period. Uh, I firmly believe that we need to be, uh, in order to meet our goals, that um, we have set to have 100% uh, clean energy in the state by 2040. We need to be working towards having um, greater industrial scale development in the state, something that Governor Walls uh, signed into law was a streamlining of permitting process this, uh, this past session. I think that we can um, be accelerating that through further siting regulations that would uh, grow a green economy across southern Minnesota, creating jobs um, across our region. Um, I am f firmly and adamantly believe that, again, we are in the transition period right now. We need to be accelerating the rate at which we are transitioning to a clean energy um, system so that we do have a planet that is viable for our children and grandchildren. Thank you. And we're now nearing the end of our forum, and we'd like to ask each candidate to present a one-minute closing remark, and we will begin with you, Sarah Kruger, DFL. Thank you. I want to thank you all and to thank the League of Women Voters for the opportunity to bring our voices uh, and our stances on really important issues to the community's attention. I would also like to thank Representative Gene Pulowski for his 38 years of dedicated service to our communities in the legislature. As a takeaway from this evening, uh, I hope you will hear me as someone who can effectively represent you and serve your immediate and future needs, regardless of which party you belong to. As I go door to door throughout the district, people tell me every day that they appreciate my support of bipartisan issues and, and approaches to working in the legislature. Meeting in the middle creates the only path forward. We all know that there's too much at stake to dwell on our differences. I will strive to serve everyone in our communities from all political stripes to create a brighter future together. And if elected, I will work hard every day to represent our district. Thank you. Thank you. And next we'll hear the closing remarks from Dwayne Vagley, DFL. It's incredibly important that DFL voters think ahead to November 5th. There's a political storm coming, unlike anything that we've seen in recent memory. Think about the number of flyers that have already been left at our doors from national conservative organizations. They're just the tip of the iceberg. It's estimated that, that the Republican Party and other billionaire groups will spend between $500,000 and $1 million to flip just this one seat in November. It's incredibly important that the DFL run its strongest possible candidate. In my past three elections, I've not lost a single ward or precinct. We must keep Minnesota the North Star State, a shining beacon of freedom and hope. I'm running because I love this community and I've worked my entire adult life to make it great. I'm running to support economic opportunity for all. Every single one of us should have the ability to thrive regardless of race, gender, income, background, or religion. I'm asking for your support two weeks from today. We need to turn people out to vote. Thank you to the League of Women Voters and thank you to my fellow candidates. The more voices, the better. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from um, S. James Dorr, Republican Party. Thank you very much. Uh, I will continue to serve the people of the state of Minnesota as I've served in the Lions Club, uh, Dorothy Day House, Knights of Columbus, Volunteer Fire and Rescue. Uh, I'll continue to fight for our Bill of Rights, our freedoms that are being uh, attacked here in the state of Minnesota by repealing, uh, fighting to repeal the uh, laws that limit our Second Amendment rights, our medical freedom, our religious freedom. Uh, Forgive me. Okay. Uh, Are you finished? No, well, I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I have more things to say than that. In summary, I am a family man. I've, I'm married. I have uh, nine children, two grandchildren. I come from a family of uh, nine boys, two children that died, so it was 11. And uh, I'm invested for the long haul here. I want a safety for my family. And I know what it takes to fight for uh, safe housing 
and water Thank for you. a family and with children and Thank education. You. Aaron Rapinski, Republican. Thank Close. you, folks. Thanks for coming and attending here tonight. Thank you for having us here to discuss this. You've heard some great answers this evening. Thanks for submitting all your questions. I'm from Winona. I'm born and raised here. I lived in this area my entire life. I've worked in this area my entire life. If you ask anybody, I think they will tell you that I am a true champion of Winona, and I will fight for the Winona County area as hard as I possibly can at the state level. Um, I, I too am married. I have uh, my youngest is just graduating. He's going out to college now. And I will listen to you folks. I will be a voice for the majority. And I'm going to fight to bring balance back to Minnesota. And I will bring both sides together. I'll create that unity and I'll be fiscally responsible just like I am on the city council. You've seen my history. You can look at my voting record, which I'm very proud of. And I would invite you to do that. So folks, I will be a voice for you and I will Thank listen you. to the majority. Thank you. Wow. Thank you all for a really informative uh, session here. We really would, uh, the League of Women Voters would like to thank our co-sponsors. We'd also like to thank HBC for taping this educational forum. Know that the League of Women Voters will be scheduling forums for the general election to be held in October. The dates and times will be shared in early September. Watch for future local media and publicity for these events. Know that the that is the 411.org is a website which is an online voter guide for candidates for the, to the candidates that will be on your ballot. The site was developed nationally by the League of Women Voters and supported by Minnesota League of Women Voters and local branches. Check out this website for information on candidates that are on your ballot, as well as how to register to vote, a sample ballot, and polling places. To register to vote, if you need information on becoming a registered voter, call the Winona County Auditor Treasurer's Office or the Winona City Clerk. Minnesota does have registration at the polls. If you are not pre-registered, you may register at the polls. Um, note that you can vote by mail or in person at the Winona County Building on 3rd Street from tomorrow until uh, Monday, August 12th, 2024. Early voting actually began on June 28th. The Winona County Auditor and Treasurer's Office is open during regular business hours to obtain an absentee ballot or to do in-person early voting. Please vote. The primary election is Tuesday, August 13th. The polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you and have a good evening. And I ask the audience here to please give our candidates a big round of applause for their effort.